Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about our top 15 travel life hacks for making your trips better. These are little things that we've picked up over our last like 13 years or so of traveling together. Or things we've seen others doing that we've stolen and adopted. Yeah, for sure. So stay tuned for ideas to make your travel days easier. Welcome to World Wanderers. We're Alicia and Will. Come wander the world with us. So our first tip for traveling is selecting seats for air travel when traveling with at least one other person. The hack here is to leave an empty seat between you. So when you get that notification to basically choose your seats, whether 24 hours in advance or when you're initially booking the trip, you would choose seats A and choose seats C. So like an aisle and a window. Yeah, no one's going to like purposely pick the middle seat in between two people. So A and C will possibly give you the whole row for just the two of you. Right. Unless it's going to be a super full flight. So the other part of this is that we tend to try our luck with this in the back of the plane because yeah, priority sure. people always want an aisle seat or a window seat or they want to be in the front of the plane to get off as soon as it's landed. Yeah, and for us, we usually don't mind being in the back of the plane, so we'd rather have the extra space for, you know, especially a long-haul flight than uh, be one of the first ones off. This has worked for us about 75% of the time, especially on flights that are overnight or eight hours or longer. Yeah, transatlantic, yeah. Our next travel hack is to book an impossible connection on a long flight to get a free hotel night. So, for example, on our past trip this year to Mongolia, all the flight options included a connection, but the flight time was extremely long. I wanted to fly halfway, sleep for the night in a real bed, and then fly the other half the next day. So we booked a connection with like a 30-minute layover in Istanbul with the hope that we'd be a little bit delayed on our first flight or not make the second one. And it ended up working out because we were a little bit delayed and missed that connection flight. Now, the important part of this is that the flight needs to be on the same itinerary. You can't book them separately because if it's on the same itinerary, you're not liable. It's not your fault. Yeah, Tur Turkish Airlines um, in Istanbul seems to be a, a really common thing for this. They, If you're getting on one Turkish Airlines flight to Istanbul and then another Turkish Airlines flight out of Istanbul, they'll give really short layover times. And then the next thing you know, you're spending the night in Istanbul. It's probably been, I don't know, maybe three times for us now. Right, and it's worked on other airlines too, but... Basically, the airline will then provide you with a hotel for the night. They'll provide you with meal vouchers and just reschedule you for the next flight that's available, which normally is going to be the same flight the next day. So if you have some flexibility in your schedule, we've found that we will purposely do this, knowing there's no way we're making that connection. This is a big airport. All right. The third thing we have is air tags for your luggage. These uh, help you track your luggage on the map. You can see if it made your flight, if it's starting to move from the plane towards the carousels. Um, if you were to lose your luggage, you can see where it wound up. And uh, all in all, it just helps you keep better track of your luggage. And the batteries last for about a year. Right. I put one in both my checked bag and my carry-on in case they make me gate check the bag. Sometimes small planes, they won't have room for your luggage in the overhead bins and they'll make you put it on the bottom of the plane when you get to the gate. And we've definitely seen these bags that are going to be pulled right off the moment you get to your next destination, be lost somehow in transit. So we always try to put one in there. Plus, you know, if it didn't make the connection, we're not wasting our time standing at the baggage claim, waiting for a bag to come out that's not going to come out. We just will head straight to the baggage office and beat the line. Yeah. My next travel hack is to bring a frozen water bottle through TSA. TSA will make you dump liquids that are over 3.4 ounces, but if it's frozen, it's a solid, not a liquid. So I'll either freeze a water bottle or fill up like a stainless steel reusable water bottle with ice to the brim. And as long as it's still frozen by the time I get to the airport, I don't have to dump it. That's way cheaper and, you know, I don't have to buy a bottle of water at the airport. And after TSA, I'll just add water to the bottle and then it's cold. Our fifth travel hack is about sunscreen. So if you're like me and hate the feeling of sunscreen, you probably use an aerosol, which is really hard to find in the 3.4 ounce quantities that are allowed for carry on bags. So instead of paying an arm and a leg for it at my beach resort, um, I'll use the small lotion ones. And I found using a beauty blender, which is a little like makeup sponge to apply it makes all the difference in the world. You can basically get really good coverage on your face. And if you or other people don't like the feeling of sunscreen, I find that it's tolerable with using this. 
Our sixth travel hack is z -Quil. If you know about NyQuil, this is by the same brand, but basically I will put a tiny container of z in my carry-on and then take a dose of it right before I board. So this makes you sleepy and in the economy seats, I've managed to get a full night's worth of sleep while he just watches videos all night. <laughs> Turns a long flight into a short flight for her. Yeah. And you don't even have to get business class. So this is yeah. my best travel hack. I sleep and then 18 hours later, I'm there. Boom. So our next hack is Google Translate. You may already know and use it, and uh, it's definitely an amazing app to have. The hack here is to download the languages for offline use. So this will let you use most of the features without having to have any kind of cellular data or internet connection. Um, you can use the camera to read text and it'll adjust to the picture. Uh, you can keep the same fonts and colors when you're doing that. Um, you can do the speak to text, like you speak in one language, it'll translate it and they can you know, speak back to you. Um, definitely a great app to have and definitely download the languages you're going to use. I found we use it most often when we're looking at menus at a restaurant. Like we'll basically not have to be like, um, excuse me, is this chicken or fish? You know, so we tend to use it a lot there and then it keeps the same layout too. And you don't have to type in every word. It's really great. We've used it for uh, like some road signs and stuff too on occasion. Right, right. To make sure we're not in a no parking zone. <laughs> yeah. Or like in Mongolia where they had like Mongolic or uh, sort of like script. My eighth travel hack is for taking photos when you're alone. If you're like me and think it's kind of awkward to ask a stranger to take a photo of you when you're traveling solo or when you want your whole group in the picture, my strategy is to go up to someone who's taking a selfie or a photo of themselves. So I'll ask like, hey, would you like me to take a picture for you? And they'll be like, yeah, absolutely. And then 99% of the time they'll reciprocate and be like, well, would you like us to take one of you two? And we'll be like, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. And if no one looks like they want a picture, then I'll kind of just like hold up my phone, taking a selfie and look around helplessly. And then normally somebody will offer. Yeah, that's true. But they don't usually take like 30 or 40 takes like you have me do. Yes. And that brings me to my number nine travel hack. And that's how to get a good photo. The key here is to take 20 of the same photo, because here's what I'm thinking. If I take 20 of the same photo, I'm going to throw out five of them because somebody's blinking five of them because somebody's like awkwardly in the background blocking the picture of what I want, or maybe 10 of them. I'll just not like the way I look in them. So at the end of the day, a few of them are a keeper. A trick here is to not use burst mode though, because then all the photos will be the exact same. They're, they're spaced too close together. If you take those 20, 30, whatever it takes manually, they're spread out a little more and there's some significant differences from photo to photo. Definitely. So our next travel hack is to get a travel credit card. Right. And there's going to be a lot of perks with travel credit cards. Uh, the first one is going to be insurance. So they're going to cover you in case of travel delays. Um, where you might need to get a different flight or a hotel or a meal in an airport that was unexpected, or they're going to cover you for some medical situations. Like if you get hit by a motorcycle or break your leg walking down some steps, um, they also will cover your like luggage. If an airline loses it, airlines will normally cover this too, but it's normally a huge hassle trying to get anything from an airline reimbursed. And they might say, oh, your luggage is worth $300. And you're like, well, my luggage alone was $300. I have $2,000 worth of clothing and makeup in there. So that's going to cover you too. And they also have rental car insurance for a lot of travel credit cards, which is awesome to save that $40 a day. They're going to try to talk you into mm -hmm. at the counter. Some travel credit cards also offer free checked bags or seat selection or boarding, boarding groups. This is kind of airline branded credit cards. So you can do your research and kind of decide which credit card fits the needs that you have. You can also get things like uh, TSA pre-check and global entry. Right. We're going to do a video about that coming up soon, um, which is an awesome way to cut time off your whole airport experience. Then my personal favorite perk, the airport lounges. Right. They're awesome. Like a lot of them will include for you and a guest to go to a lounge where you can sit, have some nice seats, chargers, free alcohol, free food. Um, they just make your travel days fun. So that alone to us is worth like the annual fee for some of the higher annual fee credit cards. But it's going to depend what credit card you pick for which which options they're going to offer. Some of the airports that we know have nicer lounges, we've intentionally even left early just to get some time in the lounge. Right. And then we make sure we don't miss our plate. So it's a win-win. Yeah. So 
Some of these travel credit cards also offer like credits for Uber and Lyft, or they'll have like a travel point system where you can earn points and then get you know, business class flights. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff that's really cool about travel credit cards. So we recommend the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Amex Platinum, which we'll put in the link below if you want to check them out. But if you travel a lot, like you should definitely have a credit card that's not just the straight normal cash back because you'll get a lot of value out of them. We have both cards and highly recommend them. Our number 11 travel hack is to hire a driver for the day. Instead of taking a bunch of solo single trips when you're trying to sightsee in a place, we found that, especially in countries with a lower cost of living, if we go up to a taxi driver and ask how much they charge to take us anywhere around the local area for the day, it's been a lot cheaper. It's also useful if you're going to go out to a, like a more isolated site and then the driver will be waiting for you when you're done instead of having to hopefully get another taxi or Uber to get back. Right. So you won't be stranded in a location, which has been kind of some of our concern in some more isolated places. It also saves you time between the time of finding a driver, making sure they're available, the time of haggling a price every single time you're getting in the car, or even just the time of making sure there's no language barrier and that you can, you know, both understand where you're trying to go. So we've done this in Antigua, Mongolia, Egypt, basically a lot of different places across the world. And we've found every single time we were like, wow, that was totally worth it. I did it in Rhodes, Greece too. And it was perfect for going around the island. Our next travel tip is to volunteer for overbooked flights. If your schedule is flexible, you can get a voucher or cash for future free travel on that airline, as well as a hotel stay or meal vouchers to eat something that day at the airport. Right. And if needed, they'll include like Lyft or your transportation. If you're already at the airport, it's basically um, they'll give you the next flight option that's either on the same airline or a different airline. If you're flexible, it's totally it's totally worth it. We actually just did this like four days ago. Yeah. Um, we were flying Spirit, which we don't necessarily recommend, but the prices are too good to pass up. So we we had our Spirit flight where they actually sent us an email in the morning saying, hey, we've overbooked, which I don't know how they can overbook a flight when I literally bought it like 12 hours beforehand. But anyway, I guess it was overbooked. So they said, hey, if you're flexible, send us an email or call this number and we can let you know your options. So they called us and said, hey, like we'll switch you to a better airline, JetBlue, way more legroom. It was a flight that was actually an hour yeah, earlier that hour day, earlier. which worked out way better for our schedule. They gave us meal vouchers for the airport that we each got $28 each mm -hmm. to pick a restaurant of our choice. And they gave us each $175 for a future flight to use. So for me, that's like a trip anywhere in the country on Spirit again. So we had done this even before we had left for the airport. So yep. it made zero difference to our day and we got all these nice perks. So we would definitely do that again. That's happened yeah. to us a few times. My number 13 travel hack is bar shampoo and conditioner. I'm not sure if this applies to guys so much, but if you have a lot of hair, um, this is like a godsend. It's not a liquid, so it doesn't count for your liquids in TSA. Um, it doesn't spill or explode when the pressure changes. So it's great for carry on or checked baggages. Uh, the bars last like a month, so you get so much Base savings for compared to bringing a whole big bottle that you're going to have to refill or find another store to get it on your vacation. And it works just as well. Our number 14 travel hack is to photograph documents and email them to family. This is for stuff like your passports, visas, tickets, in case you would lose them or something else would happen to them. Right. Or in case they're like buried in a bag and you can't find them when you're trying to check in somewhere or even if you've left them in a hotel room, we've often been asked for a passport when we've been out and about trying to buy tickets in an attraction. Yeah. And we've had them back in our hotel safe thinking, well, I won't need these until I go back to the airport. But sometimes you either get a discount for being a tourist or sometimes they just need them to track um, what countries people are coming from and they'll ask for them. So if you've got it on your phone or you have it in an email and can just pull it up, that can save you some time and hassle. Our next travel hack, and we use this pretty much everywhere we go, is a laundry bag. Right. We either bring a collapsible hamper or a little bag, which keeps the clean clothes separate from the dirty clothes in our suitcase. It's less laundry when we get home so that we don't have to wash everything, and it doesn't contaminate the clean clothes when we're switching hotels. And you're also much less likely to forget some small random piece of clothing that you chucked into some corner. 
if like everything you take off, you throw right into the bag or the hamper. Right in your hotel room. So. And then when you get home, it's easy to dump into the washer and you can unpack the second you get home. So I like to do that even if it's like 2 a.m. Unpack, do all the laundry, put everything away before well, she can go to bed. Well, just start the laundry because then when I wake up the next day, it's not <laughs> hanging over my head. So laundry bag for the win. Thanks for watching our video. What are your favorite travel hacks? Leave them below in the comments so that we can add them to our list and steal them too. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks so much for watching. Safe travels.